Welcome to Cigar Creed, I'm JJ. Thanks for tuning in. Today I wanna to go over something uh, that happens to us, um, or if it hasn't happened yet to you, it will eventually. And what I'm talking about is, is when somebody or yourself um, goes abroad where for its vacation, whatever, uh, go to places like Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Mexico, Cuba, Dominican, whatever it is, regardless. For this segment, however, we're going to be talking about Cuba. So, <clears throat> you know, I, it happens often where I know somebody's going there and they say, hey, JJ, you mind uh, me picking you something up? You know what? Oftentimes I say, don't worry, you know, not, not, not a big deal. Don't worry about it. You know, I'm okay. I'm fine. Thanks. Appreciate the offer. Or if they insist, say, okay, well, here's some things to look out for. And I, you know, throw a few things at them. And, but the number one is, is either talk to your concierge that's there. Okay. Um, a real good concierge will have, uh, they'll have a, a key on their lapel or, um, or like a golden key or two golden keys crossed or whatever. They are a specific concierge where they basically know the ins and the outs, what and know where to get anything and everything that you want. They can set up anything and everything. They're the ones with the highest contacts. So those are somebody, that's one person to look out for. They'll probably steer you into a for this case, talk about Cuba, La Casa de Halabano, uh, located on site or in your resort or down the ways at another resort. Or go to the factory and buy them legitimately from the factory. However, what do you do, you know, when somebody just comes back and, or they know somebody that did, a family, friend, relative, whatever, and all of a sudden, drop a bag of cigars in front of you, saying, yeah, so-and-so went to Cuba or came back from this place or whatever, brought me back a whole whack of them, so I put some in a bag for you. First thing you do is say, hey, great, thanks. Appreciate it. In your mind, however, alarms should be going off. Sirens, whatever. Hazmat suit. <laughs> no, I'm kidding what you want to do right away with these things is give them a good look over and then toss them in the fridge or the freezer, not the fridge, go right into the freezer, go to the deep freeze. If you have to put them in there, leave them in there for a week. Some people say, ah, you only need about three, four days. I put them in there for a week. Sometimes it happens that they're in there for two, three weeks because I forgot about them. It happens. However, when you take them out, like I have, these been in the fr freezer for three weeks, one week at work and two weeks at my house. You do not, I repeat, do not want to put these in with your other cigars right away or at any point. Do not put them with your other cigars. You want to keep these separate. Put them in a container, put them in whatever, a piece of Tupperware, keep them in a bag with a little hydrated package. However, before you do any of that stuff, before you even decide to keep them, there are some things we're going to go over. Right away, these, I, I got a bit of the backstory. Okay. It was, uh, one of the guys I work with, his parents went to Cuba. They went on a factory tour somewhere along the factory that they went to. One of the workers goes, Hey, psst, come here. I got some good cigars for you real cheap. These are them. These are, they, they even have a band on them. Never heard of them myself. They're, I guess, a local or somebody trying to make their way into the market. Uh, these are called Selectos. And I think they just, maybe they're an island brand. I don't know. But... The biggest thing is, is they like to use play on words. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's real Cuban tobacco. It's Cuban tobacco. Or it's real Dominican tobacco or Honduran tobacco. That may be the case, but doesn't make it good tobacco. 
You don't know what's in there, especially what's inside. You take that sucker up, cut it, spark it up. God knows what you're smoking. Banana leaves or friggin' scraps swept off the floor. Hair. Like, you know, bits and chunks of dirt. You don't know. So, what I like to do, these are just, my, this is what I do anyway. I'm just passing it along. Take it, you know, in stride. Anyway, right away I like to throw them in the freezer. Afterwards, then I like to kind of look them over and investigate. And that's what we're kind of going to do today. So, initially looking at them, I see cracks all over. When I did get them right away, there was a couple that I saw. And we're going to do close-ups on that. And that's why I haven't touched a single one yet. One thing to keep in mind too, anytime you're handling these or the packages that they came in, wash your hands immediately after. Wash them. Do not touch your own stash until you've washed them really good. Okay? You don't want the... If it comes with any beetles in there, you don't... You do not want those beetles to find their way inside your humidor and all over any of your other cigars. Okay? They breed like wildfire. They eat like crazy. And next thing you know, first thing, your, your stash is, is gone. It's destroyed. And you got a whole bunch of fat bugs in your humidor. So, with that, we're going to do a little bit closer look on these. Okay, guys. So, this is what we're looking at. Okay. Look at it. Okay. Look at that hole. Okay. This is why you got to look them over first and you do not want to put them in your humidor. There's another hole there. These things are all over. Now, so see here, okay, yeah, it's cracked foot, whatever. Sometimes you could easily mistaken a crack for being too dry or a broken wrapper with a trail of beetles. Because what they do is they'll eat on the surface and then dive. Then they can come up and then eat again on the surface and then dive. If the crack does not meet up, especially, then I would definitely question it. Put them in the freezer, question them again. If I roll these over, see all this? This is like some sort of sand or grain or possibly even beetle infestation there. Okay, no idea what that is. And that's why you do not put them in with your stuff. Look at, right there, another hole. Okay, that's why I tell you, you got to wash your hands after handling this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a couple out. And this is why you don't pop it in your mouth right away too. Look at that. Now, whether that's beetle or whether they did that to make it unsmokable or a pain in the ass for you to smoke is another thing. Okay. Doesn't smell too bad, I'll admit. Have a look. Look it over. See what you're dealing with. Okay. So I'm going to take a couple of these out and we're going to dissect them. There's another one. Okay. We got holes. So we're going to place those aside. I'm going to lay these out. How I like to do it is I just take and I just like to get them a little wet. Okay. Just get them a little wet. We're not going to be smoking them anyway. It doesn't bloody matter. So don't be screaming and worried about it. Just going to pop the band off. And if you do this, and any tools you do use, by tools I mean cigar cutter, make sure you clean it. Okay? It's not even a triple wrap or a double wrap and a cap, it's just a wrap and a cap. Just so you know. 
can see it. Not really a proper roll. And I'm feeling like, even though they're a little, little they're moist, I'm feeling a slime. It's actually really slimy and gross on there. I'm not too happy about that. Now, I'm not too sure. It may be from the, the wrapper, I don't know, or the, the scar band, I'm not too sure. But it seems to be everywhere else. I'm just gonna let that one sit. up okay now that's interesting so as we open it up Can still see the holes okay look at okay and we'll just wiggle that open some stuff coming out Look at okay. Now these are just bits and pieces. Okay. So they are leaves. Okay. There's the binder. Another part of the binder. So aside from some holes, we're looking at everything, okay, and it's just crumbling, all right, these could have been just pieces that were on the table being tossed out, floor sweepings, God knows, okay, look at that. If it was long filler, there'd be some long remnants. This is all short filler stuff, not that there's anything wrong with short filler, however, when you want something, you want a nice, nice cigar, and you're, they're claiming one thing, and then this is what you get. You know, I understand this is not a high-end cigar. This is not something that people would pay hundred, hundred, hundreds and hundreds of dollars for. But this is what's getting sold, okay? And we're gonna comb through it. There's a whole bunch of like grit in there. I'm not too sure for, you know, if it's dirt or, or like off the floor or what, but you know, there's a good hard stem. It's another good one. So as you can see, it's all short stuff. At the moment, I don't see anything that really stands out, aside from a whole bunch of hard pieces, hard twigs, and stems. The tobacco does have a bit of a funky scent to it. And not to mention, you don't know if you got mold inside it or not. There's another big chunk. So there will be, you know, you get the veins from this from the leaf itself. 
But aside from that, you should not be getting any large chunks. You know, a couple little items there that are questionable. So I've I've seen worse. It's not too too terrible. What really gets me though is this grit. Okay, I understand. You know. The tobacco crumbles and flakes and can be crushed into tiny little fragments. I get that. I don't see anything too terrible as in bits of hair or anything like that. I see some questionable items a little bit that may not quite resemble tobacco or parts of a tobacco leaf. And you know what? You may you may find that you may find that granite, okay, fine. They smoke fine. And that's just great. You know, everything checks out. Doesn't look too bad. You know, we're not looking at banana leaves or anything like that, no dirt, whatever. Okay, so then you decide to smoke one. Well, the thing is, is... <clears throat> Look at all these hard pieces. You hear them. Those suckers are going to make a difficult burn. And if they're wound so tight with the tobacco, may even make it difficult to even draw, to get take a draw on, okay? So there's your filler right there, all this. Again, binder leaves, okay? I'm gonna look at them. You know, yeah, you're gonna get you're going to get the, the distribution veins in there. For, they're not stems or twigs. Okay, Some of them are thicker than others, depending on where, where they were pulled from and how much sun they endured. But, like I was saying, so you get them home, you check them over, you put them in the freezer. All right, fine. You take a, one or two, you open them up, have a look at them. They look okay. Okay, sure, there's a couple holes in there, maybe beetles, but you had them in the freezer, so they're, you kind of killed them off for the most part, so to speak. So then you decide to smoke one. Thing is, is it could be real tobacco. It could be a nice cigar. But here's the thing. When they take... The tobacco, okay. I'm just bear with me, okay. I understand this is don't, how they don't how they. I understand that this is not how they roll it. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, okay. So when they roll it, though, it could be long filler. It could be any type of filler. It could be a freaking Cohiba for crying out loud that they're rolling. But here's the thing: when they roll it. If they roll it and they roll one side, watch, watch my fingers. If they roll one side first and then the other legs behind, that creates a tight knot, which will not give you any draw whatsoever. And then when they roll it that way, that may look good, everything's great, but when you get home and try and draw, the problem is, is that you're gone. They're gone. 
before you even get a chance to put one in your mouth and light it and try it. This thing may not even smoke at all because you can't get a draw on it because there's knots throughout the entire thing. They know this. Any, it doesn't matter where you go, Cuba, Dominican, whatever, they, they know that and they know for a fact that anybody buying cigars off of them doesn't know a damn thing about cigars. Because you know, and they know, that if it's a person that knows something about cigars, they sure as hell are not buying from them. They're buying the legit stuff, the real deal. Anybody that buys off of them, they don't care. They just want the money. They know that if you're buying from them, you don't got a clue. That's why we do this stuff. That's why we, we bring you this type of information. Okay? That's, that's why I want to make you guys aware. It happens. It happens all the time. The countries where these, the tobacco is grown and come from, when you go to visit them, especially Cuba, I don't want to center them out, but let's just, let's face it. They have the highest counterfeit cigars in the world. On the island. Yeah, there's legitimate stuff, but there's also the most counterfeit cigars there too. You got to keep that in mind. You got to be, it's all buyer beware, okay? And if you're not aware, you're going to get ripped off. And that's why I tell people, don't bother unless I'm going down or it's somebody I can trust that knows what they're looking for. You know, I just tell them, don't waste your money. No thanks. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. Okay? Give them a couple pointers and leave them be. Whatever they decide to choose is entirely up to them after that. So, this is what where we're getting at. I'm going to clean this mess up and then we're going to open up the second one. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be cigar number two. Okay. So now that I've used this, once again, I'm going to clean it before I even use it on any of my other cigars. Have a look at it. Uh, it's just the cap. So you know this is just quickly slapped together. No real legitimate cigar from Habanos SA is going to be slapped together like that. That would be just poor quality control. So you know this is not legitimate. Yeah, it's got a band. Yeah, it says Cuba. Yes, it's Cuban. Or from Cuba making it Cuban. You know, I, I seen a video where the guy, the, where the guy is holding the cigar and he slices it right down the middle with a freaking Zacto blade. Are you crazy? How stupid can you be? Are you going to, you, you slip and miss, you're going to slice your freaking hand open. Oh, dumb. I'm sorry, but I call it as I see it. That was just, that's just stupid. I couldn't, I couldn't believe I saw that video. Okay, so there's the wrapper. Again, we got holes. It up. There's a binder and the other button. Look at it. Look at it all. Okay, holes, 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 holes. This is infested tobacco. Okay, look at it. Guys, come on. You're gonna bring this home, stick it in the humidor with, you know, with your other cigars worth thousands of dollars? I don't think so. Sure as hell ain't going in mine. But yeah. that big sucker, that'll burn for a while. Freaking candle wick. I don't see anything too crazy. So there we are, the wrapper and the binders, and there's your filler. I'm not even, 
I'm not crumbling it. It's just that crumbly. That's that's your short filler stuff, guys. That's your floor sweepings or whatever it possibly could be. What's that? So there you go. I don't see as many big, large chunks and twigs like in the first one. This one looks pretty soft, so. Not as much grit either. Looks pretty decent for the most part, but again, it may not even smoke well, you know. Mind you, I'll, I'll grant it, they do feel quite soft. I don't really feel much of uh, in the way of any knots through most of them. But, you know, I just wanted to see what's in it before I would even stick this sucker in my mouth. Just looks like a bunch of short filler. Nothing really truly sticks out to worry about. So anyway, that's what that is. So like I said, you know, they could smoke fine. They could just be fine. Yeah, it could be real tobacco from the island. But when they roll it, like I say, when they roll it, if they roll one, two, if they roll it, if one hand goes and rolls it faster than the other, that's when you get that twist, that knot, okay, which makes it almost impossible to draw from. And that's what happens. So, yeah, you can go through and check everything and everything seems legit until you smoke it. And then it doesn't draw worse shit and then you got to throw everything else out. So, anyway, there's your binders, your filler, and your wrapper. Well, I guess the only thing left to do is now smoke one. Alrighty, see you in a minute.